Hello and welcome back. Uh, last night I cleaned up the gamepads of the PlayStation 1 and it turned out pretty nice actually. So as you can see they uh, was quite dirty and uh, I gave them a good bath and also cleaned all the all the contact points in there. So yeah. And this video will show you how to adjust the PlayStation 1 SCPH-1002 model, or 1000 model. Okay, so I have my PlayStation here, I'm going to open it. And uh, first we will just show you which version it is. So here you can see it. There. SCP-102. Okay, so the point of this video is to see if there's something can, we can do to stop that uh, rattling sound that the uh, CDs make and I think the CDs are uh, are not they are not uh, spinning evenly so I think that's um, that might be the um, I don't think it's the CDs themselves it might be uh, actually uh, the spindle I've seen people change the spindle but I don't think it's because or the rattling so and also if I, I play the PlayStation like this on the side then it works everything's fine or like this but down some like this it starts to rattle so and uh, animation and music will then not work or will work partially now so yeah let's just open it check this out it's loose is that what? Oh, yeah, it's it's actually loose because it's mounted here. So let's get that out of the way. And this is a loose unit. How strange. So how's this? Um, oh, let's be careful with this uh, ribbon cable there. So yeah, but uh, anyway, let's just ground myself. Um, yeah, so here we have the test pants. These are the ones I saw lately in a video by uh, Sticks World or John. And you had a link to a website that uh, told you you could uh, adjust the bias and the gain of the, the focusing motor or a unit here. Because this lens is moving up and down. Here you can see the laser intensity screw. So we'll hook up our scope to somewhere we can uh, measure. Maybe we have to solder onto a test point here. Because there will be a disc on top of all of this. So maybe we'll just solder some test wires out here. That would be uh, interesting. Now I've hooked the power to the unit. So if you're doing this yourself at home, please be careful and not touch anything in here because you have 400 volts. DC and uh, 220 volts down there. Scary stuff. So let's get that uh, grounding on. For now, I'll hook onto here. Alright? Or here, so it doesn't get in the way of the camera. So now the meter is grounded. Set it to volts, so we're going to measure bias and gain voltage. Okay, so the first part of the guide is to set the laser intensity and we are measuring the voltage up here. And at the same time we are going to hold down the security switch here. And now I have powered it up and that's the switch. Be careful when you press stuff. Until we press this one and you can see that it go goes up and then down up and then down again 11 millivolts so let's put it on millivolts this point so okay try it again 13 millivolts so that uh, seems a bit high doesn't it so uh, let's uh, try and adjust that okay so this proved to be a bit more difficult than I thought so I will uh solder onto the flex here. So I'm unplugging power. Yep. Okay, I'm printing pre-tin this wire so 
boom that touches. So let's just move the this out of the way for it. Temporarily put it like that inside this. So if I move it, everything will go away. So I have to be careful now. Now let's attach power. Be careful again. Don't press here because they have a live connection. So let's go. Power. And the safety switch. 12 volts. Fine. So now we're going to measure 11.4. That was almost correct. So. I think that will be close enough, don't you think? And now we'll get this uh, out of the way. Switch out the power, of course. And I didn't unplug air, but I'm a professional, so anyway. Professionals do stupid things. Now we will measure the DC bias. And that's the DC level that is set such that uh, this um, head here it has a... Uh, idle position. So it's the topmost test point here. You know, always be careful here. And don't get in on the diagonal angle like I'm doing here because uh, you can short out the ground here on the test point and then on the test point here. On the test lead and the test point. So I'm just doing it for the camera here. So um, and here you have the bias screw adjustment screw. So let's get that up to 1.7 volt, it says in the guide. So that's good enough. Right, so let's move on. Okay, so for this task we, should, we are going to adjust again. And still we are using the same test point, the topmost. And we are not now going to put on a CD and then put something in this hole to keep uh, the laser on. Or the disc spinning. Okay, so the soldering kind of sucks, but it doesn't matter so as long as it uh, doesn't break and get free. And uh, yeah, so we'll secure it down here and attach it to the meter. Okay, I will use a backup disc here. So making noise on it. Check this out. I have. Oh, sorry. Let's switch it off. I have my screwdriver here and when I touch the <laughs> bias knob and this part which is not insulated it starts making noise on it so I'm probably putting my 50 Hertz or in your part of the world maybe you have 60 Hertz in the light network or the mains so yeah that was a thing I didn't like check this out no problems, I will touch this. Oh, wait, start first. Do you hear that? It goes bananas. So, that's something you have to look out for. Now I have a little bit high value here. So, so now, now I wonder, will this actually work? So, let's try it. Get in there. I think there's something else went wrong with this thing, so... Okay, so that didn't help for me, so... As you could hear in the background, the, the game didn't load properly. The, the video and the audio was uh, shattering. Okay, so I got it working again. And uh, what I did was, uh, if you look here, I set the bias, I set the bias voltage to 1.66, or uh, yeah, when it get idle, I set it to 163. That was what I did because uh, when I switch it on like this, it's uh, higher. Okay, so 1.63 and not 1.7. So 
So you may have heard before that if you have problems reading this and the video isn't smooth and music is uh, jumping around, then you can uh, lift the unit over on this side and it will start uh, working properly. And also you hear that rattling noise will get uh, muffled. So I looked up on the site and uh, there's a guy uh, who has uh, a, a site called La Taverne, it's French, but I'm using Google Translate there for my sake. And he has listed and tried different versions of this laser. And this is the one that I have, 44 ASM, and it basically says poop. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so he, his theory is that uh, this laser unit that moves in this direction is moving on a rail and that rail is rubbing against a plastic piece that is essentially eaten away on the older models. This is the one I have. So, um, you can see here that some of them have plastic and here you can see a very good example. So, Okay, so I've detached the flex cable, I've removed two screws here, and it slides out like this. So I'm taking off the cover now, and uh, the reason for that is that I want to, I want to see how well is this fitted, is it rocking around? And I don't know if you can hear it, but, or see it, but it is actually moving. You know, So, yay! Finally, figure out to get this loose. It's like a clip that holds the whole sliding unit. And what you do is that you have to bend this pin here backwards. So, it, I'll show you. Yeah, such that it, it gets out of this position because when you Wind this unit up here, and it comes to all the way up to the top end. Then this pin here, this pin here, is an almost at the little uh, nudge there. You see that? And then you have to bend it a little bit, and it does bend to get it out, so it pops out. So we're looking closer at this problem with the... Uh, yeah, this unit not working properly all the time, sometimes. And if you flip the PlayStation on the sides, it's, it's, it works okay. Uh, I read a comment from Stig's World. And uh, it told me that the lazy unit was close to the power supply, so it can overheat. Um, I don't believe it because uh, what I can see here is that this unit, this uh, optical unit, this slides inside this uh, place here and uh, it's sort of this slot here, it's like this, right? It's like a uh, U shape and in that U shape you have these yeah, you have this nylon washes has been pushed down on these pins, so it seems, and uh, they go into that uh, U-shaped slot. And I think, and I think that when this has been uh, working for a long time, uh, since you have plastic here, it will wear off, and uh, this um, slide will then uh, not be as tight as before. So, therefore you can see that when yeah when there, these pins are inside this slot we have a lot of movement from side to side here that's because a shitty design actually so having this metal uh, or this plastic railing why is it metal if you see um, in computers or in CD-ROMs they use two metal bars instead like this, to, oh sorry, they use two metal rods like this 
and the whole unit is then uh, sliding on top of that with a pushing. So, uh, so that's the, uh, that's the, uh, also the reason if you put the device on the side, it will then no longer rock as much as it used to when it's flat. Because then the gravity will pull it onto one of the sides of this U-shape railing. Um, so is there something we can do about that? I don't know. I don't think we can. Uh, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, <clears throat> I don't think we can fix a problem like this. Um, so uh, the better thing is to get the unit that has a better sliding mechanism. So yeah, so anyway, I um, hope you liked that. So that's a little inspection here. Uh, it's also... So I'm measuring the laser unit here, and you can see that it's um, about 0.8 peak to peak, and it's a burning CD. And uh, I adjust this uh, according to the manual, it should be 0.9 volt peak to peak, if you use original CD. So I used original CD to adjust, so uh, yeah, I think the laser is okay, it was a bit off. So. That was better now, but uh, the problems comes back if, depending on how this is, module is sitting, because you see there's some uh, sliding motion here, and that's not good at all. So yeah, and also it's the same as before. If I tip the unit over, uh, it starts working. And so yeah, it's definitely um, this unit has. Um, has worn out. So this is the problem with using a digital scope is that uh, if you don't have any uh, retention or so you can sort of paint many uh, paint over the same picture many times like you can do in an analog scope because analog scopes you have a phosphorus screen so if you paint the screen many times you can have many waves over the same screen so that we can't see this uh, eye diagram here because uh, it resets every time it triggers. So yeah. So oh, now it's gone bad again. So what I do then? It seems to be fluid now. Turn that all over so that I can cut right to there. See? Now it's working. Yeah. No problems at all. So definitely something about that slider.